Hi there, my name is Mr. Code, and in this video we're going to talk about the insertion operation for red black trees. And before starting this video, I would first like to mention that I've also created a video on recognizing red black trees, where I'm discussing the properties that a red black tree should satisfy. And that video is really a basis for this video, so if you haven't watched it yet, I would recommend you to do so. However, for this video, let me first provide you with an overview of what we're going to discuss. First, I'll explain insertion for red black trees. And this explanation contains several examples in order to clarify it. Then we will together do an intermediate example where I've provided an exercise for each case. And these cases together cover every case that could occur for insertion. And by then you will already be masters of the insertion operation. So then we can go over the pseudocode. And finally, we will discuss the performance of the operation. But let's start with explaining insertion for red black trees. So intuitively, if you think in terms of insertion for search trees, well, it comes down to moving from the root of the tree to the bottom and adding a node at the end of such a path. So if we want to insert the node 5, then we would move to the left of 11 because 5 is less than 11. We would also move to the left of 7 because 5 is also less than 7. And then we would insert it here. However, this could lead to trees with all kinds of shapes, so also very unbalanced ones. And this is exactly what red black trees try to prevent. In other words, red black trees are self balancing search trees that put some extra effort during insertion to keep the search tree balanced. So of course then we have this task, we have to insert node x into red black tree t. And for insertion we're actually just going to consider the following decision rule, which says that if x is the first entry, add x to t and color it black. And if x is not the first entry, then replace the relevant external node with x and color it red. Let's see what actually happens using this decision rule. Well, in the first case, if x is the first entry of the red black tree t, then t would initially be an empty set, it wouldn't contain any nodes initially, and we would like to add 5 to it. Then we have the first case, so we just add x to t and color it black. Let's now consider the else case using this red black tree. So we again want to insert 5, which will end up to the left of 7. So here we replace the relevant external node with x and color it red. So now if you think about it, are you happy with this decision rule? In other words, does it still satisfy all properties of a red black tree? Well, the answer is no, but almost. Because it respects all properties except for the red property. So in the previous video, I've enumerated the properties of a red black tree. Which are these properties? So the root property, the external property, the red property and the depth property. Obviously the root node is always black because if t was initially empty we would add a black node so We would have a black root. We haven't changed anything about the external property Every external node is still black and the depth property doesn't change because We're only inserting a black node into a red black tree if it was initially empty Which means that every path along the red black tree still has the same black depth So it has the same number of proper black ancestors as I said, the red property is violated because we're always inserting red nodes if x is not the first entry, which means that cases like these could occur. And this situation is also referred to as a double red. In other words, here we have to do some recoloring in order to resolve this. Now taking into account this tree and this situation, let's for convenience first introduce some notation. So from the bottom to the top, we will first label the nodes to be x, y, and z. And s will be the sibling of y. So in the previous situation, we inserted x, and then the parent of x is y. Therefore, the grandparent of x is z. And s can also be referred to be the uncle of x. Keeping this notation in mind, we will resolve a double red by performing a case distinction on the color of s, which will help us a lot in resolving the double red. Let's first assume that S is black. Now for this case, we will resolve the double red using the following algorithm. So first we will relabel the nodes to be A, B and C from the left to the right. In our case below, X, Y and Z will become A, B and C. Then we will replace the original Z with B. We want to change them taking into account their color. And then we will make A and C its children, keeping in order relationships unchanged. In this case, we will have the following. For step one, again, we will have A, B, and C. And now for step two, 
we want to change Z and B taking into account their color and A and C will become their children. Now note that we will not introduce another double red because of the assumption that S is black so in this case we will have S on the right of C meaning we don't introduce another double red and this is also because we keep the in order relationship unchanged. Note that I've used three dots next to each other to indicate that the rest of the tree is independent of what happens with the subtree taking into account the assumption. In other words, using this algorithm for this assumption, we will always respect the red black tree properties. So not introducing another double red is of course very useful because after this algorithm you're basically done with resolving your double reds and you again have a nice red black tree. Now what happens if S is not black? So let's assume that S is red, like we have in this example. Well, we follow the following algorithm. First we will color Y and S to be black and Z to be red. So basically this layer will become red and this layer will become black. Now if Z is the root, all the parent of Z is red, then we repeat recoloring for Z. In other words, we repeat the algorithm that we have just performed. So indeed, this introduces a loop in our algorithm. So for this example, we will first recolor our nodes, and then we feed it again to the algorithm, such that the newly introduced violation will be resolved by the algorithm eventually. Now if this is not the case, of course, so if z is not the root and the parent of z is not red, then we're just done and we've resolved the double red. Now note that because of the algorithm the black depth is still the same because the number of black nodes along each path is of course yet the same. Also note that only the black depth will be increased if the root is recolored because of the iteration that occurs here. In that case we are really increasing the number of black nodes by recoloring the root to black. So if you grasp this you basically already understand how insertion for red black trees work. But in order to master the subject, let's do an intermediate example. I've prepared an exercise for each case, as I mentioned. So let's start with a warm-up exercise where we insert the number 5 into the following tree. Don't be scared by the size of the red-black tree. I assure you that this is going to be easy. So if you would like to do this exercise on your own first, I can only encourage you to do so. Please pause the video and come back when you're done. But for now, I will continue with the answer to the exercise. So of course this is a rather simple exercise because we only have to insert 5 as we've already done before to the left of 7. We just replace the external node and make 5 red. We end up with the following red black tree where we haven't introduced the double red because 7 is black. Let's now do another exercise. So here we're going to insert 23. Again if you want to do this exercise on your end first, please do so. I think it would be brave. Again pause the video and come back when you're done. The answer to the exercise is to move to the left of 29. We will replace this external node with 23, but then we will have a double red, so we need to do some recoloring. Now note that the sibling of Y is black, so we're actually in the case where S is black. So we again move to our nice algorithm to do the following. So we relabel the nodes to A, B and C from left to right, and then we replace Z with B and make A and C its children. So in our example, we will have X, Y, and Z. We relabel them to A, B, and C. And then we interchange Z and B and make A and C its children. So we end up with the following tree. As you can see here, there won't be another double red, as is promised by this part of the algorithm. Now, I've already mentioned that we are going to do an exercise for each case, so you can probably already guess what case this is going to be. But this is going to be the exercise. So again, if you want to do this exercise on your own first, please do so. Pause the video, come back when you're done. For now, I will continue with the answer to the exercise. So for the answer, we will be inserting 89 to the right of 83. By doing so, we will, of course, introduce another double red. For convenience, I've already indicated the labels X, Y, Z and S. And by looking at S, we see that S is red, so we have to apply our other nice algorithm. Well, we color Y and S to black and Z to red. And we will have to look at what happens with Z. So if the parent of Z is again red, we will have to repeat recoloring. In our example, again, we recolor Z to red and S and Y to black. And then we will have the following red black tree. Here again we have another double red because we have 42 which is red. So now we've propagated the problem to a higher level in the tree. 
for convenience I've again labeled the nodes so we have x y and z and if we look at the sibling of y we see that 7 is black so we again apply our algorithm when s is black so we relabel x y and z and interchange z and b make a and c its children therefore we will end with the following tree as you can see the tree seems to have changed a lot but it's actually only because we had to keep the another relationship unchanged because we're applying this algorithm at a higher level in the tree but as you can see 42 moved up and a and c became its children and when we look at the previous step we see that now our tree looks a lot more balanced okay so by now you're basically masters of the insertion operation so let's move on to the pseudocode of the algorithm and i'm sure that you by now grasp this rather quickly so we first have our insert function here which basically adds x to the subtree and then performs a rebalancing operation during the rebalancing operation we first check whether x is the root if it is then we make x black else we will make it red and these lines are just based on our initial decision rule and for convenience i assign y and z to be the parent and the grandparents respectively now if the parent of x is red then we have to do some recoloring for convenience we assign s to be the sibling of y now if s is black then we are in case one and we have to do the restructuring which outputs a b and c and then we just make b black and a and c red where a and c will be the children of b and in the other case if s is red then we will have to make y and s black and z red and then we will have our recursive call for z and that's actually all and let's end this video with a remark on the performance of the algorithm so in my previous video i have already said that insertion runs in o log n and i hope that in this video this has become more clear because in the worst case of the algorithm we have that the double red problem gets propagated to the grandparent and this can keep happening but when doing so we only have to do this for the nodes when moving up so each time the double red problem doesn't get propagated to the other half of the subtree meaning we really have an algorithm that is performing an o log n this is actually very nice so we had to put in some extra effort but what we have is a self rebalancing tree which is therefore very cool all right so that's it i've explained how insertion works for red black trees we've done an intermediate example together i've provided you with the pseudocode and we understand now the performance of the insertion algorithm all right so if you thought this video was useful make sure to hit the thumbs up to give this video a like if you still have any questions make sure to use the comment section below and if you want to see more videos like this one make sure to subscribe so stay cool bye